Marvel Comics have gone out of their way for the past decade at least to alienate their own readership, causing a lot of people to speculate, what would you actually have to write? Like, how far over the line would you have to go to actually get your comic book series canceled by Marvel Comics for poor writing or subject matter that they just didn't think they could handle actually publishing? We finally have our answer. It is Luke Cage City on Fire. If you remember, this was the only Luke Cage miniseries they were producing to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Luke Cage. It was also tying into the Devil's Reign event that was going on with Chip Zdarsky. The writer's name is Hoche Anderson. You've never heard of him because he's not really a mainstream comic book writer, but his parents named him after Che Guevara and Ho Chi Minh. So surprisingly, well, not surprisingly, he might have went so far over the line that he kind of fucked himself, and Marvel Comics were left with no choice but to cancel the comic book. They would have been on Fox News, probably CNN, and every other major news outlet if they would have produced this comic book by Hoche Anderson. And it, it sucks. I'm going to be out there as a Luke Cage Power Man fan. The character's been around for 50 years. He's probably the most important African-American superhero in American comic book history. And they never did anything to celebrate his 50 years. In, in Marvel Comics, he's the first black character to have his own solo series. That was a landmark event within the American comic book industry. And they end up having to cancel the series because Ho J. Anderson, it turns out, is a really bad writer. And I'm going to get into what he was planning here. And I'm going to tell you just from what I'm about to read, it seems like C.B. Cebulski actually made a good decision this time. Comic writer Hoche Anderson has explained how exactly his first Marvel project, Luke Cage City of Fire, was canceled mere weeks before it would have gone on sale. Anderson recalled his conversation with Marvel executives saying, long story short, they sat me down and said, we're canceling this book. We're afraid that the subject matter is going to be damaging for you. We don't want you to be attacked by right wing nuts. We, we don't want you to be attacked by right wing nuts. Do you think C.B. Cebulski speaks like that? I believe Hoche Anderson absolutely speaks like that. And it does feel like he was fed a line of bullshit there. We're just protecting you by not publishing your comic book that we already paid for and paid to the artist for. They were protecting themselves from Hoche Anderson. It wasn't exactly the right time for a comic book inspired by real world events, burning down cities and murdering people left and right. Unfortunately, America had just gone through a lot of that for months upon months, basically a year straight when that had happened, and they decided they needed to cancel the book. Do I think they were protecting Ho Che Anderson from right-wing nut jobs? No, I think Marvel Comics were protecting themselves from Ho Che Anderson and what he had to say, not about Marvel Comics, because this had nothing to do with comic books. You don't believe me? This is some more information. According to the writer, his miniseries drew inspiration from police brutality in George Floyd, a black man murdered by a white police officer in May of 2020, with the title's premise being, what would happen if the mother of George Floyd hired Luke Cage to protect Derek Chauvin, her son's murderer? Anderson shared his own assumptions for why else Marvel acts City of Fire, guessing higher executives might have said, no, this is going to affect our bottom line. It really wouldn't have affected their bottom line because... A Luke Cage miniseries written by Hoche Anderson would be expected to sell absolute dick in the American comic book industry right now. They didn't affect their bottom line. They just didn't want his trash associated with Marvel Comics. Think about Marvel Comics now. Marvel Comics are the publisher that allowed one of the writers who had a detractor on YouTube that he didn't like. He actually took the guy that he didn't like, put him in his comic book, named a Nazi after the guy, and basically called him a literal Nazi in Moon Knight. Marvel Comics are the publisher that presented Donald Trump as he was running for president as literal Modoc in their comic books. It's not exactly like they put big time constrictions on the writers and what they're actually able to say within the comic book regarding real world events and all that kind of stuff. Marvel Comics are pretty liberal when it comes to letting their writers use their characters in their universe to take many, a many a pot shots at the detractors. So think about this. Just how fucked up was this comic book that Marvel Comics, Marvel fucking comics in 2022 actually canceled it. It must have been atrocious. It must have been so far over the line. We can't even imagine just how far Hoche Anderson went. I'm glad that it never got published. And I think it's a good lesson for Marvel Comics and other writers out there that want to come into the industry, get onto a mainstream publisher, and not actually write about the characters. Because none of them actually care about the characters. Finally, C.B. Cebulski made a smart. It doesn't happen very often, but I tip the cap to C.B. Cebulski. Anderson closed out his answer to the original question by declaring City of Fire a missed opportunity overall. 
I feel like we had an opportunity to tell a story that had some real world relevance. The fact that it got shut down so quickly told me unequivocally that is not what they want. They don't want that at all. They just want safe material. So if they hire me again, that's what I'll give them. I'll give them safe material. But it's a shame because I feel like we had an opportunity to tell a story that had some relevance. And they would have been on the right side of history for being strong enough to tell the story. So it's a missed opportunity. Oh, man. If I never have to hear being on the right side of history again, like, it, it'll be too soon. I'm so tired of hearing that. But that's the big problem. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to get on my soapbox here for a minute. Marvel Comics even hiring Hoche Anderson to come in and do the 50th anniversary celebration Luke Cage miniseries was ridiculous on its surface. Marvel and DC, DC is not immune to this, they keep hiring these writers with nothing to say about the characters, with nothing to say about the universes, really nothing to say about superheroes or heroism in general. So what you get is Cecil Castellucci's take on Fourth World as well as Batgirl neither of which had anything to do with the new gods or Batgirl herself. Or you get Christopher Cantwright-Wells' Iron Man series, which has absolutely nothing to do with Tony Stark or Iron Man. The comic is only about what a loathsome prick Christopher Cantwright-Well is. Speaking of that, Tom King's Batman run never really had anything to do with Batman. Actually, every single thing Tom King has done, for the most part of DC Comics, is just about how depressed he is. He doesn't have anything to say about the universe. He didn't have anything to say about Wally West, so he went out and did his own thing. And that is one of the problems with Marvel and DC Comics right now. Tony Kesey Coates got five or six years to write Black Panther and Captain America. He never said anything about Black Panther or Captain America. He never said anything about Wakanda. Sure, there was some really good Brian Stelfreeze art there at the beginning, and certainly informed the movies later on as the way they would look, but nothing he added to the Black Panther lore even sticks anymore because it was never about Black Panther. Go read the other histories of the DC Universe from John Ridley. Tell me what that man has to say that's relevant to the DC Comics Universe itself. Go read his I Am Batman. Tell me that he actually likes Batman. You can't do it because he doesn't like any of these characters. Marvel and DC keep bringing these people in from outside of comic books that don't like comics. They don't like the characters. They don't like the universes. And they despise their actual customers. And quite frankly, it's shocking that there's only been one series canceled at this point for going so far off the fucking reservation that they couldn't risk it at that point. Marvel Comics is in a terrible place, but they made one good decision in 2022. They canceled Luke Cage City on Fire from Hoche Anderson. Did you want to see the story about George Floyd's mother going out and hiring Luke Cage to protect the man that murdered him? Nobody wants to go to DC and Marvel Comics to read what-up stories about absolute bullshit. This is escapism. This is entertainment. They weren't bringing it there, and I'm not surprised it happened. In fact, I talked about when the comic book got stealth canceled, not a lot of publicity about it, and I speculated. And it turns out I was pretty much 100% spot on why this was canceled in the first place. Definitely go back in the Wayback Machine, because I was fucking right. If you don't see the video here, there's also a link in the video description.